In this video, we're talking about how to find the general solution to a second order non-homogeneous differential equation. And in this particular problem, we've been given the equation y double prime or the second derivative of y plus 4y prime plus 4y is equal to e to the negative 2x plus sine of 2x. And of course, we know that this is a non-homogeneous differential equation because the right-hand side is non-zero. Whenever we're solving a problem like this, the first thing we want to do is ignore the right-hand side. We'll pretend for a second that it's zero, and we're just going to deal with the left-hand side. We're going to make a substitution where y double prime is going to be equal to r squared. I always like to count the number of prime marks or hash marks, whatever you want to call them. Here, we have two of them, so that's going to become r squared. Here, we're going to get plus for y prime becomes r to the first, or just r because we have one hash mark, and then plus four, and there's no r variable because this has zero hash marks. r to the zero is just one, four times one is just four, so we leave it like that. We're gonna set this equal to zero, and then we're going to solve for r by factoring the left-hand side. So when we factor, we get r plus two times r plus two is equal to zero, or r is equal to negative two. So we have equal real roots. We have two real number roots that are both equal to negative two. When we have equal real roots, we use the formula for the complementary solution and we get y sub c of x, we'll say y sub c for the complementary solution, is gonna be equal to c sub one e to the negative two x plus c sub two x e to the negative two x. And remember that this just follows the formula for equal real roots. It's exactly the same as the formula that we use for distinct real roots, except that we plug in this x here to distinguish these terms from one another. If we didn't have this x, there'd be no difference here. But when we have equal real roots, we have to put in that x to make them different. And we have negative 2 here and negative 2 because both of our solutions are negative two. So this is the equation for our complementary solution. And now, as you know, we need a particular solution because our general solution is gonna be the sum of the complementary solution and the particular solution. When we find the particular solution, this is when we start paying attention to our right-hand side, to the original right-hand side. And we're gonna make a guess about the particular solution. And we just sort of have to generalize the values we've been given over here. So what we're gonna say is, y sub p of x, the particular solution for y, is gonna be equal to, when we have e to the x here and we have some coefficient, we always leave the coefficient in the exponent, but we need to put a coefficient in front of the whole term. So we're gonna get a e to the negative two x. And this is just a constant. It's a placeholder that we use to represent a constant that we're gonna solve for later. So whenever you have something in this format, go ahead and leave it as e to the negative two x, whatever the exponent is. Just put a constant coefficient in front of the exponential function. And then when you have something like this, sine of two x, for sine or cosine of some value, you actually need to include both sine and cosine values. And we need constant coefficients in front of those as well. Because we've already used a, we have to move on to b. So we're gonna say plus b times sine of two x, we leave that as it is. And because we've got sine, we also have to include cosine. So we'll say plus c cosine of two x. And if you had cosine instead, you'd still have to include cosine and sine. So either way with sine or cosine, you're gonna need both of these. So this would be our guess for the particular solution, except that we have one problem. Our first term here, we have a e to the negative two x. Well, that's just a constant times e to the negative two x. And unfortunately, we have that same kind of term in our complementary solution. c sub one e to the negative two x is just a constant, c sub one, times e to the negative two x. We call those like overlapping terms, and we can't have overlapping terms between the complementary and the particular solutions. When you have an overlapping term like that, something in the same format, what you need to do is multiply that term in the particular solution by x until it's no longer the same or, or no longer overlaps with a term in your complementary solution. So what we would do is we would multiply this a e to the negative 2x by x, and we would get a x e to the negative 2x. But now, unfortunately, this term overlaps with the other term in our complementary solution. We have a constant times x times e to the negative 2x, and here we have a constant times x times e to the negative 2x. So no big deal, it's an easy fix. We just have to multiply by x again. So instead of just ax, we'll get ax 
squared e to the negative 2x. And now we've eliminated this overlapping problem. We have two truly unique solutions. So we'll use this as our guess for the particular solution. Now we need to find the first derivative of our particular solution. So we'll say y prime sub p of x is going to be, and we need to take the derivative of the particular solution. To take the derivative of ax squared e to the negative 2x, we'll have to use product rule, where ax squared is one function and e to the negative 2x is the other function. So taking the derivative of ax squared, we get 2ax, and then we go ahead and leave e to the negative 2x as it is. Then we add to that the opposite situation where we leave ax squared alone and then we multiply by the derivative of e to the negative 2x. Well, that's negative 2 e to the negative 2x. And then to take the derivative of b sine of 2x, we need to use chain rule. The derivative of sine of 2x is cosine of 2x, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And since the inside function is 2x and its derivative is 2, we have to multiply by 2. So we get 2b cosine of 2x. And then same thing here, the derivative of c cosine of 2x, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so what we're going to end up with is negative 2c sine of 2x. Now when we simplify this, we're just going to end up with 2ax e to the negative 2x, bring our negative 2 out in front and get minus 2ax squared e to the negative 2x plus the rest. Now we need to find the second derivative of the particular solution, so we'll get y double prime sub p of x is going to be taking the derivative here. Again, we'll have to use product rule. We'll treat 2ax as one function and e to the negative 2x as another function. The derivative of 2ax will be 2a. Then we multiply by e to the negative 2x. We just leave that alone. Then we add to that 2ax where we leave 2ax alone and we multiply by the derivative of e to the negative 2x, which is negative 2 e to the negative 2x. Then we're going to subtract, and here we're going to use product rule again. We're going to treat 2ax squared as one function, and we're going to treat e to the negative 2x as another function. So the derivative of 2ax squared is going to be 4a x, then we're going to multiply by e to the negative 2x, leave that as is. Then we're going to add to that what we get when we leave 2ax squared alone, so 2ax squared, and then multiply by the derivative of e to the negative 2x, which is negative 2e to the negative 2x. Taking the derivative again of our trigonometric functions here, the derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine, so we're going to get minus 4b sine of 2x, and then the derivative of sine is cosine, so we're just going to get minus 4c cosine of 2x. If we simplify our particular solution, we're going to get y double prime sub p of x is going to be equal to, we'll get 2a e to the negative 2x, here we'll get a negative 4ax e to the negative 2x. Then distributing our negative sign across everything in the parentheses here, we'll get a minus 4a x e to the negative 2x, and then because when we multiply these together, the 2 and the negative 2, we get a negative 4, but then we distribute this negative sign, we end up with a positive 4a x squared e to the negative 2x, and then our trigonometric functions. Now we can combine like terms here. We have a negative 4ax e to the negative 2x and negative 4ax e to the negative 2x. So we'll combine those two to get a negative 8ax e to the negative 2x. Now with the particular solution and its first two derivatives in hand, we can go ahead and plug these back into the original equation we were given. What we want to do is take our second derivative and plug it in here for our second derivative. We'll take the first derivative and plug it in for the first derivative here, and then we'll take our original particular solution and plug that in here for y. So we're going to just plug those in. Taking the second derivative, we don't have any coefficient here, so we're just going to take this whole thing, plug it in up here. Then coming back to our original equation, we're going to say plus 4 times the first derivative, so we'll say plus 4 times everything that we got when we found the first derivative of the particular solution, so we'll plug in this whole thing here. Then going back to our original equation, we have plus 4 times y, so we'll say plus 4 times, and then plug in the particular solution we found here. 
and then we'll set that whole thing equal to the right hand side from the original problem e to the negative 2x plus sine of 2x. Now what we want to do is simplify the left hand side and combine like terms. The first thing we want to do is distribute this 4 across all of these values and this 4 across all of these values. When we do that we'll go ahead and write our terms in sort of a column format so this 2a e to the negative 2x. There's no other term in this whole thing that's not multiplied by an x or an x squared. So we'll put that by itself, 2a e to the negative 2x. Then we've got here the second term, minus 8a x e to the negative 2x. Now we're looking for other terms that have a constant multiplied by x e to the negative 2x. Well, we can see that we have one here, 2a x e to the negative 2x. So when we multiply that by the 4, we get plus 8a x e to the negative 2x. And let's go ahead and cancel terms as we go. So we're done with these ones. Now we'll take this one, we'll say plus 4a x squared e to the negative 2x. And we'll look for other x squared terms. So we have here x squared. So we're going to multiply that by 4 and get negative 8a x squared e to the negative 2x. And we've got one here. So we'll say plus 4 a x squared e to the negative 2x when we distribute that 4 and that takes care of this one and this one. Now all we have left is our trigonometric functions so we'll put all of our signs together so we'll say negative 4b sine of 2x then we've got a negative 2c sine of 2x but remember we're distributing this 4 as we go so we'll get minus 8c sine of 2x and then we have b sine of 2x, but we have to distribute this 4, so we'll get plus 4b sine of 2x, and that'll take care of sine, sine, and sine. Now we just have our cosine terms left, so we have minus 4c cosine of 2x up top. Then we have 2b cosine of x, but we have to multiply by 4, so we'll get plus 8b cosine of 2x, and then we have this one, c cosine of 2x multiplied by 4 is a plus 4c cosine of 2x, and that takes care of our last three, cosine, cosine, and cosine. This, of course, is going to be equal to our right-hand side, e to the negative 2x plus sine of 2x, and now we can go through and cancel like terms. So we have negative 8ax e to the negative 2x and positive 8ax e to the negative 2x. Those two will become zero. We have a plus 4ax squared e to the negative 2x plus 4ax squared e to the negative 2x is a plus 8. Then we have a minus 8 of the same thing, so these will all cancel with one another. Here we have a negative 4b sine of 2x and a positive 4b sine of 2x. Those go away. And here we have a negative 4c cosine of 2x and a positive 4c cosine of 2x. So those cancel. And as you can see, all we're left with here is 2a e to the negative 2x minus 8c sine of 2x plus 8b cosine of 2x is equal to our right-hand side, e to the negative 2x plus sine of 2x. Now with our equation in this form, all we needed to do is equate coefficients from the left and right hand side. So what we look at here is we have a 2a in front of e to the negative 2x. Here in front of e to the negative 2x we have a 1, an understood 1. So we're going to go ahead and say 2a is equal to 1. In front of sine here we have an understood 1 and in front of sine over here we have a negative 8c. So we're going to go ahead and say negative 8c is equal to 1. Then we have no cosine term on our right hand side and we have 8b in front of a cosine term on the left so we'll go ahead and say 8b is equal to 0. When we solve these for our constants, for a we'll divide both sides by 2 and get a is equal to 1 half. For b we'll divide both sides by 8 and get b is equal to 0. And for c we'll divide both sides by negative 8 and get c is equal to negative 1 eighth. Now remember the reason we needed to solve for these constants in the first place was so that we could plug them into a, b, and c in the particular solution. And I had erased what we had for the particular solution, but if you remember from earlier in the video, this was the guess that we got for it. Remember we just had a e to the negative 2x and we had had to multiply it by x so that we didn't have an overlapping value with c sub 1 e to the negative 2x. And then we ended up having to multiply by x again so that we didn't overlap with c sub 2x e to the negative 2x. And then we had these trigonometric functions 
functions to account for sine of 2x here in our original right hand side. But now that we have the particular solution and the values for a, b, and c, we can go ahead and write the general solution for the second order non-homogeneous differential equation. Instead of writing sub c or sub p for the complementary and particular solutions, we'll just write y of x, this will be the general solution. And remember that the general solution is always the complementary plus the particular solution. So we'll get c sub 1 e to the negative 2x plus c sub 2 x e to the negative 2x, that's the complementary solution. Then we add to that the particular solution. And the particular solution with the constants plugged in, we have a equals 1 half, we're going to plug that in here. So we're going to say plus 1 half x squared e to the negative 2x, plugging in 0 for b, this whole term is going to cancel and become 0. And plugging in negative 1 eighth for c, we're going to get minus 1 eighth cosine of 2x. And that's it. That's how you find the general solution for the second order non-homogeneous differential equation.